Um, for this debate, I will be defending how the water scorpion, or their scientific name, is the Nipponae apicolata. Pretty sure that's terribly wrong, but there you go. It is a, is a better predator than the tiger beetle. But before I get started, I wanted to announce that I do not have a partner, but I have been given permission to do this debate on my own. So basically, instead of the debate being 10 minutes, mine will be 5, half of it. I'll have the same format as everyone else, but I'll be coming up with my own rebuttals and responding to them, so let's see how this goes. The water scorpion is a pretty common, they are found in fresh water. Just a little bit of biology, um, some people wonder if it's related to regular scorpions, they are not related, but they do have some resemblance, but not too much. They're about 0.6 to 0 0.0 inches long, so they're relatively small. The water scorpion has front legs adapted for seeking prey and a long, thin whip-like structure at its posterior end that resembles a regular scorpion. They have sucking mouth parts known as a rostrum. Um, to eat, they inject a chemical into their prey which instantly liquefies them so they can suck their insides out. So it's pretty gross, but it's pretty pretty cool. First of all, they are air breathers. They need oxygen. Um, and how they get their oxygen is from their tail. It's probably their most unique part, which sits in its heart. Um, they have their tail is made up of two respiratory tubes that extend above the surface water, enabling the water scorpion to take in air. So basically, it's like their own personal snorkel. But they can be underwater for thirty minutes without air. And this is how they hunt, obviously, and what's also pretty neat is that they lay their eggs just below the surface of the water on algae or the roots of plants, So they're, and the eggs have these tiny little hairs that reach above the water so the eggs can survive, and that's how they get their oxygen. And kind of going along with that, their mating season is in the spring. The females can lay about 30 to 40 eggs, which they lay at night, and then it takes another three to four weeks before they hatch. Interesting enough, they are actually not good swimmers at all. They try to remain as still as possible and as close to the land as possible. When they do move, it's pretty slow. The only fast motion is when they're ambushing their prey. Um, <clears throat> anticipated rebuttal would be, how do water scorpions effectively catch their prey? when they are not very good swimmers. Well, um, they use their camouflage to their benefit. Um, they resemble twigs, so the water scorpions like to hang out around, like in ditches or muddy ponds, around the debris and plant roots, and they just hang out there. And then from there, they're able to catch their, their prey by surprise. And just because they don't swim or they prefer not to swim doesn't mean they can't swim. They have these uh, pressure sensors that keep them from getting into deep water. So as if they're drifting too far to chase their prey, they have these internal air sacs that compress and push them, their nerves and let them know, hey, you're going too far, you need to go back. Um, another anticipated rebuttal could be is I have heard their stings are not as powerful as a regular scorpion. What can they really kill? And well, this is true. A water scorpion sting is less poisonous. It would not affect us humans like as a regular scorpion would, but it would feel like just a really hard pinch. But for the water scorpion, it's perfect for them in the setting that they're in. Uh, their sting allows them to kill small amphibians and small fishes. So as soon as their legs snap their prey, they inject it with that chemical I was talking about earlier, which liquefies them. And they just suck out their insides and it's pretty cool actually because since they don't move it happens really quickly and then the whole process is done. Overall water scorpions are pretty common um, they remain pretty still for the most part until they ambush their prey. I also um, was actually reading that aquatic macro invertebrates such as the water scorpion play a crucial role in the nutrient cycling decomposition and translocation of materials. Though aquatic macroinvertebrates are physically small, they are a major link in exchange in the energy exchange from producer to consumer. The biodiversity of the aquatic invertebrates 
um, is an important indicator of the ecosystem function. So it's about, like you can tell from how many organisms are in there, how well the e ecosystem is doing, which um, is how scientists kind of keep up and keep learning.